Hello and welcome to Evening Reading and Prayer. It's Thursday, March the 30th of 2023. We begin with a reading from Celtic Parables by Robert Van de Weyer. Grasping Water You cannot grasp water in your hand. It drops through your fingers. You cannot grasp truth in your mind. It drops through your thoughts. You can only possess water by drinking it, taking it into your body. You can only possess truth by living it, taking it into your heart. Our prayer resources this evening come from Arlene Marks' Words for Worship. Let us pray. O God of infinite love and compassion, we bless and praise you. When we stray, you patiently await our return. When we return, you welcome us. When you welcome us, you forgive our sins and heal us to wholeness. We bless and praise you, our God of health and salvation. Amen. Our first scripture reading, <coughs> excuse me, is Psalm 30. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol, restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you had established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face. I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O Lord, my God, I will give thanks to you forever. And from Isaiah chapter 38, the first 21 verses. In those days, Hezekiah became sick and was at the point of death. The prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, came to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die, you shall not recover. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord, Remember now, O Lord, I implore you, how I have walked before you in faithfulness with a whole heart and have done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah, Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of your ancestor David, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. I will add 15 years to your life. I will deliver you and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria and defend this city. This is the sign to you from the Lord that the Lord will do this thing that he has promised. See, I will make the shadow cast by the declining sun and the dial of Ahaz turn back ten steps. So then the, ton, the sun turned back on the dial, the ten steps by which it had declined. A writing of King Hezekiah of Judah after he had been sick and recovered from his sickness. I said in the noontide of my days I must depart. I am consigned to the gates of Sheol for the rest of my years. I said, I shall not see the Lord in the land of the living. I shall look upon mortals no more, among the inhabitants of the world. My dwelling is plucked up and removed from me like a shepherd's tent. Like a weaver, I have rolled up my life. He cuts me off from the loom. From day to day, from day to night, you bring me to an end. I cry for help until morning. Like a lion, he breaks all my bones. From day to night, you bring me to an end. Like a swallow or a crane, I clamor, I moan like a dove. My eyes are weary with looking upward. O oh Lord, I am oppressed, be my security. But what can I say? For he has spoken to me and he himself has done it. 
All my sleep has fled because of the bitterness of my soul. O Lord, by these things people live, and in all these is the life of my spirit. O restore me to health and let me live. Surely it was for my welfare that I had great bitterness. But you have held back my life from the pit of destruction, for you have cast all my sins behind your back. For Sheol cannot thank you, death cannot praise you. Those who go down to the pit cannot hope for your faithfulness. The living, the living, they thank you as I do this day. Fathers, make known to children your faithfulness. The Lord will save me. And we will sing to stringed instruments all the days of our lives at the house of the Lord. Now Isaiah had said, let them take a lump of figs and apply it to the boil so that he may recover. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our reading this evening comes from the devotional Life on Purpose by J.M. Farrow and is simply called Our Healing God. In the passage we just shared from Isaiah, though King Hezekiah was on his deathbed and had already been told by the prophet Isaiah that he would not recover, he pleads with the Lord to deliver him. Many of us would have just accepted the bad report we had received. Yet this man of faith sought God's mercy and power in his darkest hour. God not only healed him, but he increased his life another 15 years as well. I believe that God is using Hezekiah as an example here to show us how essential prayer is when we are in need of healing. I also believe the Lord is illustrating how He sometimes uses practical remedies in the healing process. Notice that the prophet Isaiah prescribed a fig poultice for the king, no doubt at God's direction. God did the healing, but he used a simple treatment to bring about recovery. I believe that God can anoint an herb, vitamin, or medicine to promote healing, and he can use doctors to prescribe beneficial remedies, just as he used Isaiah here. 2 Chronicles 16, 12, and 13 records that King Asa was afflicted with a disease in his feet. Though his disease was severe, even in his illness, he did not seek help from the Lord, but only from the physicians. The next verse reveals that Asa died from this affliction. This is a very clear warning to all of us. If we choose to depend on doctors and remedies apart from seeking God, we could be risking our health or even our lives. Another lesson scripture teaches us about healing is that it can be a gradual process. In Mark 8, 22 to 26, Jesus lays hands on a blind man twice before his sight is completely recovered. While I do believe in instantaneous healings, I believe that most healings take time. And just like Jesus used various methods to heal, God may use one way to heal you and another to heal someone else even though you both have the same ailment. The next time you're ill, turn to God first for help. Ask him for his wisdom, according to his promise in James 1, 5. Search out God's many promises of healing in the scriptures. Pray and stand on them. My prayer is that when you do, you'll soon be able to declare, O Lord, my God, I called to you for help, and you healed me. Let us pray. O God, our salvation, you are near to all who call. Hear and answer our prayer. You are a refuge for the oppressed. Be our stronghold in troubled times. You set the lonely in families. Do not abandon the the parentless. You stand at the right hand of the needy. Rescue all who are wrongfully condemned. You raise the poor from the dust. Restore dignity to the outcasts and refugees. You give food to the hungry. Uphold the cause of the destitute. You watch over aliens and sustain the widow. Provide protection when there is danger. You heal the brokenhearted. Bind up the wounds of all who suffer. You are a mighty God who loves justice. Establish your equity for all humanity. 
Praise be to you, O Lord. You hear and answer our prayer. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Be at peace. Always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. Hold fast to what is good. May the God of peace sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Good night.